is another video on uh, how to sketch, I suppose, for um, Product 310. Let's see. I'm going to be using a little ruler. Let's see if I can keep focused here. Uh, an eraser and a lead holder. Um, previously, we've been drawing uh, more solid shapes. This today, we're going to be sketching some uh, sheet metal. For example, a hurricane uh, tie. Uh, these are these parts can be fairly simple. This one's not too bad. <clears throat> Notice the reinforcement darts in the crease here, uh, all the way up to much more complex. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The the dilemma here is to try and sketch somewhat efficiently really draw attention to the thickness of the part and keep our sketch uh, reasonably timed. I'm going to draw something of intermediate complexity here. Uh, this joist hanger for a 2x4. Um, obviously, 2x4s, the, it, this is an American part, uh, but in Canada they're actually metric. It doesn't really matter, other than the ratio is 1 to 2. So what we're going to do here is try and sketch this guy out, uh, use an upper projection of our choosing. Uh, there's our joist hanger. It's, you know, moderate complexity. Uh, standard, fairly standard part, uh, about a dollar, dollar fifty. Oh, hold on, today uh, Home Depot has been uh, Gouging has a bit, maybe two dollars nowadays, whatever. Two fifty. It's a simple part. Um, it does have one sort of well, a, a set of points of interest. One is that these two pinned or uh, toenailed guides are not straight. Notice they're offset, so they don't meet in the wood. The fastener doesn't meet in the wood. And also, we have a positioner, a little hook. You would hammer this in with your hammer when you're getting it ready for final fastening. It also gives us a little bit of a shear resist uh, in the part. Uh, if you have threads, you don't want to put too much forces on them, and this would remove potentially some of the shear from a fastener. Not exactly. Like, these are not high-precision things. Uh, and the wood tends to shift around as your house gets older, but all in all, uh, an evolved uh, design. Uh, you can see some, for example, holes added to make the bend work better. Uh, and to relieve some stress, strangely. We can talk about that next year in machine design. So for now, though, we're just going to sketch it as is. Uh, so keep in mind what we just looked at. We've pre-drawn a little... Uh, here, here we are. A little uh, thumbnail of our projection. Uh, as before, uh, this is about 15 to 45. Man, my pencil's blunt. So 45 to 15, these two faces are, sorry, these two edges are equa measured. So it's kind of an isometric, but this face is, sorry, this edge is two thirds uh, or so. So again, this is a cube, but to make it look more reasonable to our normal eye, the projection shifts it around a bit. So what I'm going to do is start here with a, basically a box shape, which is going to uh, represent the uh, main part. I'm going to draw this quite large. So I'll just start here and then focus on it a little bit. Draw a line here about, <laughs> not very straight, uh, not very vertical. Uh, a line kind of taken up quite a bit of the page. I'm going to get rid of that. I'll do it again because that was terrible. So trying to draw a vertical line. There's our start. I'm about a third of the way from the left of the page. Let's focus on that. Now, I want to go up at about 15. Notice how I'm holding my pencil. Just trying to lay things out here. So more gentle. Uh, this is where I can pick my unit. Uh, I don't want to be massive. Uh, you can see I've used this one before. But I'm going to give myself enough space to do something. So here's my unit. And again, you want to, we've got a ratio here of 2 to 1, or 1 to 2, however you want to think of it. So I'm going to need the middle of that. So folding over. And there's 
my half. So, kind of going from the sketch I have and going towards my box shape. Now, again, holding the pencil, trying to draw. You can't see this, but I'm trying to draw from the shoulder. Parallel, parallel. If I want, I can use my paper ruler to make sure I'm doing okay. You can see my angle's a bit off. So I'll just tidy that up, or at least find the better line. So there's my profile. Now at 45, I want to draw forward. So uh, 45, just looking for a good angle. Parallel, 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 parallel. So there's my target. And this thing sticks out. Just off screen here, I'm just using a ruler to uh, get the proportions here roughly. So if my full unit is 80 millimeters, I'm coming out 50. So just beyond the half. Now we could get into it all carried away here and all the rest, but I'm just going to say it's beyond the half and there it is. So I can use that mark and it could be whatever it is to give myself the right, again, parallel, parallel, the right distance, well, unfortunately, right on that line. That's accidental. You can see how I'm using the ruler to keep things under control. Unfortunately, right over the top, that is just pure luck right there. You can see I'm also bending a little bit here, so I'm going to be trying to keep that under control. There is my general shape. Now, we have these flaps. It's not the official term. They come back off of this. So we'll map those in as well while we're at it. Now, using a ruler, our total width there is 100, more or less. So that's kind of, um, this is about 50. The full width is 100, so it's actually 2x. I need the middle of this part, so a quarter of a unit, so I can measure from that out. For those who are thinking, what is he talking about? Just rewind, watch it again. Uh, again, I'm just trying to lay things out. So far, this is about 50 millimeters. Our total width here is about 100. We said this was X, so we need a middle point here and X both ways. And all we're doing here is just laying this out so that we get a reasonable start point so that we don't have bad proportions later. So again, using our ruler to lay things out. Parallel reality, parallel on the sketch. Just getting my sort of framework ready for this guy. That's right. Actually, I'm moving away here. So, there's our total shape. So we're doing well. Uh, next thing here, if I can find it. Sorry, I just lost the shape. Here we go. So we can see here, if we look down upon it, interestingly, these are also not the same. Hmm. So if we look here, you can see this is offset. This is shorter than this. This is longer. So we've got this interesting shape here. Someone has to mesh in here. Not sure what. They wouldn't go together. Anyway, interesting patterns. So we're discovering things as we go along here. Notice these holes are aligned vertically and horizontally, but this cutout is different. Anyway, so we'll draw some attention to that. This, however, seems even. Yeah, so I'm just going to look and see what that distance is. So we can either measure from space or 
like it's hard to measure from a corner we can't see so on the other hand i'll just go down so it's about 50 so it's longer than our normal measurement so it's x again so we use these you can start to see now this is quite common uh, obviously a, a designer is going to have some rationality in their heads we hope so we can start to see the designer's rationality now looking at the back of this interesting shape here so there's some kind of interesting cuts and shifts so the key thing here is to try and replicate that as best we can without getting too carried away again cad is coming CAD's really good at this stuff, so we don't need to get too carried away. We just need to make it quite clear what's going on in the corners. So, I'm going to say, okay, well, we're going to leave some space across. Now, we want that to be the same on both sides. And then just join those guys up. So we've got some marks. We're just trying to get these sort of inclines sorted out on, the, on these flaps sticking out. We also have, like this is a more or less by eye. So smaller sort of cutout. And around, and around, and around. The round here would obviously be for uh, safety for the user. And I'm gonna put my circles in here. They're quite close. To the corner we can see if we're looking at this at the same time this is not sticking in far enough this needs to go out almost to the edge of the hole so either we move the holes or we move the edge so just trying to keep these clear one of the things we're gonna have to show the CAD person even if it's ourselves is what aligns with what so if we now have a look at this and say okay well what I want to do is make it clear to the viewer that this line, these uh, edges are the same uh, same size but offset. So again, if I want a little mark, I can just give that to myself, give myself some help, and use this to get the right distances. Again, our circles are going to be the same. Uh, position left and right but this slot has moved so again round round if we want to get the slot correct we can say there it is and just using the ruler as a helping hand to get everything uh, arranged correctly these are sharp corners because they're nipped off. This is for the user's fingers. You don't want to be bleeding them. But there we go. Now we can see here that this thing, the the little, I don't know the exact word for this, the the slot bent up, the profile bent out of the, out of plane, is actually kind of in the middle, but not really. It's actually a little closer to the edge. I'm gonna say it's there on both sides. So again, just keeping track. Now it's not bounced so I've got a little and I can think okay nice. What you'll start to see is as you go along the same measurements will arrive all the time because the designer who's using CAD most likely is going to reuse shapes uh, on measurements and all that stuff. How far up does this go? You can see these are centered on the actual holes at the top. So this is another point of interest and a design intent is the fancy word of saying. So how far down does it go? I'm not sure. Uh, it is distinctly above even on the left here. So we'll say it's there. Now again, I'm just guessing again or estimating. But the key thing here is to say that the design intent is that this is this angle here is the same on both. 
and that's above and in, inboard of the base of the slot. Again, if you want to make it clear to the viewer what's going on, just pull that across. Now, I'm going to leave this because I'm not quite sure how much of this is going to be visible. So we'll detail this one up completely and maybe fill in a piece of the back to keep the viewer understanding what's going on. Right. Next is this front. So we have a round here, uh, which is normal. Uh, when you bend metal, you can't get a sharp corner. So no surprise. And just map that in. How far out does it go? So again, really? Goes out. Oh. Actually, goes out a quarter of a unit. Hold on. Get some of those here. No, it's slightly less than a quarter, I would say. But quarter ish. So. Right, and then one thing we can do again with this ruler always is give ourselves helping hands trying to get the lines set up. So there's our first. Sometimes, again, as we go along, we'll end up with quite a bit of construction. Uh, so we just have to keep track of that. Now, at this front here, we have this complicated uh, additional corner. If we look at it, though, this diagonal does come down and touch the tip, so we will end up here on our line. So it's our front piece. But where is it on this diagonal? We're just measuring. It's at right, it's at 45 in the real part. 45. So if we know this, we know that. So I'm using a bit of logic. If we have this distance here, we can see what it is. Do we already have it? Oh, there it is. Half to this mark. Half to this mark. Half to that mark. So just using the ruler to see if I already have it, which I do. Connect those up. Looking good. Uh, next, we have tabs. Now, again, we have tabs uh, similar. And all of a sudden, we've answered my question from before. Why? This is an important point, I suppose. Why are these two holes or slots, tabs, moved in space? doesn't seem to be of any use, all of a sudden that does make sense. We'll notice that these are aligned. And these are aligned. And we suddenly realize that maybe when they're making this, they nest this from the adjacent piece out of the metal into the next one. And all of a sudden this makes some sense. Nice. So this also gives us some help because now we can just traverse these around the shape and find these tabs. It'll also be the same size as this, more or less. All right, so we'll make a point of that. So this is good. We've already drawn quite a bit, so we have this mark on both. Parallel in reality, parallel in the sketch. So I'm trying to get that at 45, sticking out a little bit. And how far does it stick out? Well, we already used that measurement, so we'll just stick it out again, the same amount. So again, this is this can be quite complex, uh, this sort of built up construction. What we're doing here is looking for the logic uh, in the part. Again, trying to show something, for example, here we have something uh, to worry about the user and then strangely they leave that top corner sharp uh, i know from experience that one actually sticks into you quite a bit 
So again, using this tab here to map across and then replicate its negative space into a positive. It seems to be what they're doing in the real part because they probably nest them when they're cutting them out of metal before they bend it up, the development. So this is a good point to make here. So again, on this side, we have, we're going back to the hidden corner twice. And we're sketching that hidden corner out. Again, this is our corner. You can see the back here. So we want to go parallel in reality, parallel in the sketch. Again, just drawing through everything with abandon. And we have that same depth sticking out. If we get, we're starting to get a little lost here, perhaps. Just always look for your old construction. That's the corner of interest here. And if we're starting to get lost, just stroke that in. And again, if you're losing things, you can always use a bit of construction to say, here I am. So again, coming around, see the point of interest. So from this tab through, you can see that I drew out the wrong one. Parallel reality. Nice. And our distance is now known. So make sure we get the right one. It's right there. And right there. So that's our tab sticking again. Be careful. Not careful enough. What's going on here? I think if you're watching this video, you can see where I went wrong. Again, well, there is here. Not a big deal. I screwed up. So I'm going to the wrong edge. So take this back. So a little bit of care is, attended, is required here. So there's our mark. Sorry. Again, making sure we've got all the right sizes. And again, I'm cheating a little bit here, but not too much. All right, so this should be about two thirds. If you want to, you could shrink it down a bit. But for me, because I'm already having such a time with this. That looks more correct. And so I'm, I'm actually darkening some edges in here to make sure that I don't get lost again. Okay, so this looks right. This goes over, it's above. If I draw a line from here, if I want, you can see it's above as well. So that's good. Again, this is a fairly general thing. Keep in mind when I'm, what I said before, this measurement, because it's out of X, it's on the shorter axis, should be a little shorter. What I'm actually gonna do later is shrink this by emphasizing the thickness going into the part here. This will have the effect of making it shorter. So this is one way of kind of working along. So that's coming. It's probably sounded like I was just cheating there too much. But for this stuff, we're gonna actually have the thickness go into the part. This will have the effect of shrinking our diametric down to the correct proportions. So I'm just reminding myself before I go too much further that this thickness here is important. Okay, now, one of the things we're going to be working on here is trying to make sure that our thickness is obvious, because this does have a thickness, this piece of metal. One of the advantages of drawing so big is that our thickness is quite serious, and we can have an easier time to make sure that that will be a final edge, along with this really nasty, not vertical line here. Fix that up. I'm getting kind of stuck here with this hole behind. I'm trying to avoid it. I shouldn't. I should just keep on trucking right over the top. Again. A little bit of smudging and cheating inside of that corner to get it to go into the correct angle. So go around. We're doing not bad here. One important point is this. I don't know if this is very visible. Oh, sorry. Maybe you've not been seeing what I've been doing. Nice one. There's our thickness, sorry, after all that. Uh, the previous uh, discussion again, uh, very quickly, 
I took this out one to one. In the projection, we want this to be slightly shrunk. So what I did was think, make this thickness go into the part's length. This has the effect of shrinking the diametric correctly. I've got some stuff to go on outside of here for now, but for now, uh, that we'll leave that to the end. So these two complex parts, final features, final thing. One of the things we have coming is this front lip. If this is going to be very visible but there's actually a small hook here almost if you run your finger over it it's it's actually quite sharp and this i believe is to hold the two by four before it gets screwed in and maybe even hold it when it gets vibrated again so again there's quite a few sharp edges in here corners and such so we'll make a big deal about how sharp this is so, it's part of our sketch requirements. So, moving along. Having a look here. It's actually a small, sharp shape. Now, we're going to have the inside of this coming down here, along this inside part, because I made a decision further up here. So, as it, there's going to be some stuff going on in here. Nobody knows yet. But down as we go along, the thickness will be on the inside of this part. It is very slightly inboard of the ends. So we have a cutout here. So I am going to sketch this in right now. As the end of our part. Now, in here a bit okay. we've got a complex shape in here CAD will be good for this the CAD might not even be bothered that much either um, because in a way the real shape is what we're going to end up with this goes back very slightly it goes into a relief that essentially bends around into the part now, what I just did is not correct. So there's a cutout here. So this part also has a vertical piece removed. And then it bends around and touches there. So we have a very complex shape in here. Erasing just to get some space for it. Now, where does it go to? Well, we also have a silhouette here. So it must touch the silhouette. Now, is that exactly correct? Don't know. As you can tell from my voice, don't care. So, what I'm going to try and do is just show that there is something going on in here. Again, we're going to have the vertical on this side. It's going to, this is the hidden edge. It's going to come around and join into these two edges. How exactly? We're not that bothered. Later, this is going to be time for a sharp pencil, mechanical pencil, to show exactly what's going on here. I'll just kind of start mapping it in. All right, so we're going to end up with this complicated uh, edge here. What we're trying to say to the, the CAD person or the manufacturer is we want a relief there and we want this piece at the end to protrude out into space. It's very important for the functionality of the thing. So that's good. So we can start to see the part emerging here. And then we're going to have thickness going up. Let's go back to my easier pencil on both sides. So we're going to have ends and outside edges. Also going to have a corner in there. Now we might use cross hatching to get this emphasized later. We're looking quite good. Let's come out a bit here. Now we have essentially the same shape again in the back. We can focus on that. So we have this quite complex sort of 
relief set of reliefs. You'll notice this angle here is again 4 to 5 parallel. So we'll draw attention to that as well. So moving on and focusing. So I'm going to be working away at the back here now. We've already mapped in the back corner uh, position. So we've got this guy coming down and we know where we're coming from. So we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, we know how thick this is. That is that X distance. And again, we can, just to keep the viewer happy, oh, keep the viewer happy, we're going to keep sketching across so that they know what's going on. Sorry. I am going to emphasize this slightly. So just to keep my mind clear. That's our edge coming around. Again, this is a roll and all the rest of it, but we're still looking for this. This will get hidden in our final line eventually. So for those purists amongst us, he is cheating slightly here. You can see as we come down here, actually, we have a small jack. I'm going to use my other pencil for this. Kind of bending this line a bit too much. So you have a jag on both want this to be parallel so if in, even if I have to cheat I will parallel parallel this is getting too far away so I'm actually just going to move this across okay so I'm most interested in making this parallel if, if I just did that actually so I'm trying to show that these are parallel Little relief once we're happy with it. It's actually not that bad as far as construction goes. And all I'm going to do in the, on the back here is try and connect the same thing together. So we've got this shape. I'm just going to parallel in a, the smallest, lightest way in the back. Show that behind there, even though it's not parallel. So leaving that open. Right, so now we actually discover some stuff. And for example, this whole end here was empty. So construction comes in handy. Keep in mind this box is open at the back. So we're going to start finding shapes here. Again, now we discover, oh, okay, we can actually see this. So we end up going all the way up here. It's starting to come together a bit. Then we can see something's going wrong back in here. So even if we're finding this a little bit janky. Parallel, parallel. Okay, so I'm trying to keep all my construction running simultaneously it re sometimes requires a little bit of cheating we've got a corner here so we can start to see how complex this so-called easy part is and how we might become a little bit worried about the sheet metal in the next couple of years what else do we need well we've still we're going to focus on this we'll build up some stuff over here and then add it to the other side as we see fit, as we can see it essentially. So first things first, I'm gonna work my way from front to back, is which is not a bad habit. So we know this is not gonna hide this, but just in case, if this stuck way out or something. So starting front to back, we've got some stuff to go. We've got this toenail guide, positioner, we will say, hook, and relief hole still to go. Starting with this guy. Uh, this is going to be more by eye. It's kind of in the middle, I would say, of the tab. If we look down upon it, I don't know if you can see this very well. If we look down upon it, we can see this is sticking B 
beyond the bottom of the tab, kind of out in the middle, we can see also that it's torn. So the metal's actually broken open or ruptured to make this hole. If we're looking carefully, we can kind of see the mark of the tooling that did this. So there's a kind of a, a clamp comes down that holds this piece in place and a piece comes from behind and rams through and rips the metal. So we're going to draw the curved part first. So I'm just going to do this by eye. It's kind of in the middle. So there's the middle. It sticks out beyond the bottom of the tab. So there's our start point. And looking at this one, uses up about half of the tab. So quarter of each. This will give us a nice curve. Now it's not tangent here, it's tangent there. So we've got this shape coming up and around and do a bit of a run up. Now this point actually rotates up a bit. So if we want, what we can do is show the arc of that movement. And looking at the part, it's kinda, I'm going to say it's about that big, which is, you know, kind of that mark again-ish. It is a complex shape. So it comes down and then kind of comes around and joins. That, this side's quite easy. This side is harder. Let's kind of try and map it in. There's our hole. Right now it looks strange, like it's not telling us anything. So we need to put some contours. This point here has to come back down to this midpoint. So we'll put a contour here to say this is the straight edge. If we want, we can add a contour on top. Just arbitrary here. Oh. Probably not the best spot to put a contour, so I'll just, it's adding some strangeness to it. So what I'm going to do is add, to map it into the front of the tab, I'll do it here, maybe kind of hidden in the back. I'm going to use my sharper pencil here to put up depth here. Now the key thing is this is a sharp edge. And it is sharp. Uh, it'll, you can use it to trim your fingernails. So this comes around. This thickness is mapped through here. So the key thing here is the thickness of this metal shows how all these faces go together. This will be a hole straight through the part. So again, we're going to have the thickness importantly in here. So using my uh, thinner pencil here just to make a point. Hopefully I'm doing this right. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes. So the thickness comes up once it starts in here. Is that right? Nope. What am I doing? This will be like so. So you won't see it until it just starts to hide behind the part. Well, you can make that darker. This is a corner. And we've got our edges here. Now, I don't mind sketching the whole thing with the lead holder, but for accuracy here, sometimes it makes sense to use the sharper pencil. Uh, for this, I'm just using a 0.7 lead uh, B. And this is going to be a hole. So eventually, once we start doing our parameter, this will become a hole through. Right? So we won't be able to, sorry, we'll be able to see right through this part to the back. Okay. I'm just going to start doing my perimeter so I can keep track of what's going on here. Using the lead holder to uh, give myself that thick perimeter. Looking not bad. Again, we might want to emphasize this construction line a little bit to show.
So what's going on? So just trying to show a part. And again, you don't have to necessarily have these lines continue all the way across the part. Uh, often in previous classes, we would always do that. But for this one, we'll just stop where it gets hits the flat. Again, if you want to, just we have a nice big sketch, we can kind of do this. We can show these alignments uh, to the viewer, and in this case, maybe the manufacturer or the CAD worker or ourselves later. Now, importantly, we need to replicate this over here. Now, on this side, we're going to have the middle again, about just a little bit in front, and about a quarter each side. That'll be our arc. From this point of view, we see a different thing. This is a much more complex shape in here. So we have a sharp corner here where it is pulled away. And there's actually a kind of a crease here. I'm just looking at the part. It's kind of hard to see what's going on uh, because the back of this is hidden. So we'll have a contour coming down here and coming through. So what I'm actually going to do is draw a strange couple of contours here to show kind of what's happening in here as best we can. But we want this to join eventually, so there's our middle. Contour lines can help. This might be not completely obvious to the viewer what's going on here. But hopefully they'll be able to see that there's two of them. We will not be able to see, I don't think, the top of this. Now, the problem with this is it's tempting to just leave that. Um, but what we can do is actually help them by just drawing a little tiny edge up there. Is that completely correct? Maybe not. Uh, but it helps to show just that tiny piece that will hopefully map across. So they'll be able to see what's going on. So that's the end of those things. We're going to add maybe one more piece of this later. Uh, so for example, uh, one thing we can do... Uh, we may or may not do it in this sketch, is actually add a nail or a fastener, which would be along these angles. But it doesn't do any harm to kind of map in that center mark. Are they correct? Doesn't matter. Again, we're just trying to show that there is an angle here. Same, same stuff on this one. This rotates up now, just guessing in an arc. Trying to show that offset. And the angle is almost correct. It's kind of 45. But I'm just looking at it. It's quite sharply away from our eye. Again, we've got thickness. If we want, I'm going to use my sharper pencil to get into this. It's going to be hidden by this edge here. So this hole is edged. And it's going through uh, the circle. Now it's looking a little funny. So just flatten it out a bit. So just going to emphasize the shape of the hole versus the shape of the uh, hook. Now will we be able to see this angle? Well, we'll wait here for a second. So we're just trying to get all this arranged correctly. Now, it is very slightly curved by the machine. So we'll just put a little almost finger shape here. Now, over here we've got this angle for our thickness. So yes, we will be able to see that. We're looking down upon this hole. So we'll have an edge like so. We can continue this if we wish. To the back of it as construction just to show what's going on. Yeah, just 
where we'll be able to see these edges parallel reality parallel the sketch so that will get hidden by this bit sharp corner again using the sharper mechanical pencil here to mop in our edges same on the other side so again I can go ahead here and bring some edges across. Won't be able to see the whole thing though, so we'll just have a edge parallel. parallel. And then into the almost the hole. Again, parallel, parallel. Show very lightly what's going on. And then maybe finish it off. So this is our edge coming down here. So I'm just gonna wrap that in and see where we end up. So right now there's a dilemma which one is it on? Well, we've already decided further down. So just keep mapping. Cross. These are final edges, so I can draw quite dark. It's everything working out. So we have a dilemma up here, where we have a back going to the front. So we'll deal with that later. So I'm just continuing on around. We've got quite a lot of this done. Now, what do we do here? Right, so we've got this dilemma. We've already made some decisions further down, which we've kind of reversed. What we can do is just kind of cheat it through. So you can blend one side into the other, and then on the other, just suddenly discover you've jumped the edge. Because our sketch is, it is a sketch, right? Nobody's gonna call a foul for this. As long as it looks correct, nobody's gonna be measuring it to some great extent. Well, maybe me, my marker, but just doing the curves by eye. I have a thinner eraser here, uh, which I can use to tidy up thicknesses. I'll do more of this later. But essentially what I'm trying to do here is keep it clean. So that people, the viewer, sees it correctly. I'm just starting to work my way around the thickness here. Will I be able to see this? Yep, because parallel, parallel. So I can see the middle of that arc coming around. Same over here. What about out here? Parallel, parallel. Somewhat luckily, we can't see the underside of this curve here. So then we'll just keep on trucking. And I'm just kind of trying to get stuff finished here around for final edges so I don't lose track of what's going on. Again, we're going to have a quite dark. Through hole here because we'll be able to see through to the void behind. Again, going to be doing some perimeter stuff here so I can start doing that as I go along. And what's the exact shape of this? Well, we're not really being clear, but hopefully, this shape down here will show what this must have been or what it is. So In here somebody that's Boris upstairs doing okay now we have these holes we've laid them in fairly well uh, kind of size wise it looks okay now the temptation is to build a bunch of stuff in here but again just gonna do them by eye 
I've drawn many ellipses over the years. Thickness is important here, though. There's one trying to keep it even, and again, also keeping to that edge. Kind of drawn this one on purpose. It's not too great. What I can do is just lighten it out or erase it entirely. I'm just going to lighten it. Try and keep it about the same size, right? So if you want, you can give yourself a hand with trying to get at least the size correct. And you want it to be tangent, so we're going to go for a more careful circle. But again, I'm not doing a, an enormous amount of construction here because they're just lots of these circles, except it's ugly. You'll notice it's kind of lumpy, ugly. Just tidy it up as best you can. Again, a little helping hand up here. Tangent to that edge of the top. And the thickness is important. One more. Old construction, but that's good. Again, this will be actually tangent here. I'm going to shift it very slightly so it's not getting too much in the way of that little tiny piece of that. Uh, Fastener guide. Not bad. And we can start to work our way around this side of the perimeter here. The thickness will be hidden by the part here, the part itself, at least on most of it. Right here, we'll be able to see it though. So, again, parallel in reality, parallel to see that thickness until it goes again and gets hidden by the part same as up here we have the remnant of old construction here there's our angle here that goes right through oh goes right through somehow Let's have a little cheat it's so to see it go past parallel look for parallel lines parallel so it's working our way around corner here, parallel, parallel, the thickness is screwed up a bit, goes up and you won't be able to see it until it goes behind, as it goes behind there. Again, so small problem here, just carefully get rid of that edge, and then work our way up to that. Quite rough lines here, oh. and also quite bent lines. Thickness is a bit thin. Again, just use the small eraser or the edge of a larger to get that sorted out. We have a small visitor here, you can probably hear. Or it's the dog. So, working our way around, we're kind of more or less done here. Uh, we've got the recesses to go, so I'm just some events happening in here. No, last is this relief. So, it's quite a big hole aligned with the circle, the fastener hole here. So I'll do that. Parallel, again, using my pencil light on edge. And we can check both sides. It is balanced. So again, just gonna continue right across here and this should match up to the other hole. So getting those two guys together. Uh, gonna make it uh, quite a bit bigger so I'm gonna go for you know, something like so and you know just making sure that it's even this is a mostly a circle out here or half a circle so I'm just gonna draw again 
what we had before. And then on this face, it's going the opposite. It's going around the corner. So we've got this arrangement. So the tendency is a little different. Same on the other side, looking for the middle. About the same size and then a different tangency. This will be further back outside so we can draw enough just to get used to the idea what's going on here. So we're going to use this sharper pencil to sort of also to make a point about this corner here. Will we be able to see the thickness? Definitely. Be able to see it in here. Now which way is it going? So from here it's going to be going this way. So we'll be able, it'll jump behind. And under here it's going this way as well. So we'll be able to look down upon the thickness and then it'll disappear. On the back side. And it'll go round and along this hidden until around the hidden edge. This will have a thickness like so. so we'll be able to, as if this was a sphere cut out of a solid, we'll be able to kind of look down upon this hole. Just discovering how this works. The thickness will be visible momentarily. So however you want to show that. It's actually not that bad, I suppose. I'm just trying to show the thickness as a right before it rolls out. It's not too great. Hold on, it's too dark. Let's try that again. So down here and then around. So instead of a solid, then we're going to make it an edge. It's better. So there's our relief hole. So now just. I have all the stuff I need here now. So from now on, it's just a perimeter. So use it back to the lead holder. Doing quite a big perimeter here. And all the way around. And don't worry too much if if it goes wrong, because you can always erase it away. So, for now, it's going around and saying this is all one part. So I also want to be able to show where the holes are, which is important. It's fairly obvious, uh, maybe. But sometimes, what's a hole is not completely straightforward with these types of shapes. Carefully going around. Now this, one of the big advantages of doing this is we now see that this part here is actually the void behind transparent. We don't have a sharp line here yet, so just put the edge in first. Uh, before I forget, just add this on. Make it stand out properly. Careful in here. It's not bad. And this front edge. I'm actually going to erase this a bit more just to draw attention to it. Uh, or maybe shade around it to make it stand out. Now we have some holes here we need to focus on. 
we've got a hole here and inside this relief hole so we do need to do this uh, it's tempting to leave it because we spent so much time on it but it'll be not clear if we don't do this inside the fastener holes the little lozenge shapes they are getting a little bigger as i went along but it's not bad So, we've got some, it's not bad. Now, just going through here and emphasizing the thickness of this part, which is in a way what it's all, what it's all about. And right, if we ignore the thickness of this, we'll have a major misunderstanding here what this thing is. All right, so is it a sheet of paper or a piece of metal? This is a Piece of, this is a piece of metal. So we do have to make sure that it comes across correctly. You'll notice I'm kind of going a little bit over. You can always add them back on. Some smudgy work in here. This is our first thickness sort of de definition, so it'll always be a bit messy. Some lumpy thickness. We'll just fix that up. Of course, every time I do that, it smudges back across. Look for the edges that are now not defined very well. This one is not. Completely correct, completely correct. I just fix the shape up. In a way, kind of discover the right uh, profile. So we, what you'll notice I'm doing here is actually kind of hiding these thicknesses in the perimeter, uh, sort of mess in a way. Uh, this quite big rough uh, perimeter hides or lets us. For example, kind of strangely redefine and kind of really emphasize uh, correctly what, if I could do it right, what we are uh, after here. Sorry, trying to get this one uh, resisting me. There's a groove in the paper now. Pulling my pencil out. So, trying to show the viewer. We notice something here. We've missed this entirely. So we'll add this on. Again, try and show the same sort of construction as we had on the other side. There's a thickness through here. I don't know how much we can see. A tiny, tiny hole there. So we'll not thicken that too much, otherwise we'll lose it. Again, just build up the construction for the missing parts. So. The other thing is we have this hole going down. You can kind of see it here. So rebuild that. Right, to match this side and the thickness will be hidden. So we don't have a hole here, which is okay. Like it, it might be a little confusing, but nothing serious. This part sticks forward most in front of the rest. I'm gonna, again, really play up its darkness to make the viewer see it uh, in a way first. Make everything else recede behind it. We have this back of this thing here. I want to make this edge quite clear. Right, it is a major feature on this part and we do need this to be very clear. So again, just show Kind of in a way make this this construction right here unnaturally dark just to show and what I'm gonna do is emphasize this to draw attention to that it's a little cheat not bad to do this so I'm actually gonna erase out that edge and put the thinnest of lines back in there what I want to do is emphasize that this is sticking beyond and also what I want join it 
This is a bit confusing. So I need to add this. The problem is if I do this too dark, which you can see now, it starts to look like a solid. I wanna thin that out as part of my cleanup later. Things aren't looking too bad. Now, on this one, we want to probably do some cross hatching to show the corners. So we've been going quite long, so apologies. Ooh, an hour already, so long video, sorry. But I want to put some shading on this somehow, uh, just to draw the attention of what it is. Uh, there's a lot of theory for this. Uh, and, you know, fair enough. What I'm going to do is try and... I want to show the angles. So I'm looking for two or for surfaces which are going to clearly define the shapes that I have uh, worked on. So one thing I need to do is look for a kind of an efficient uh, face. We've got these three directions, back, protruding and flat. Uh, the protruding connects the two together, so I'm actually going to shade, because of that reason only, I'm going to shade these connecting phases, which are the protruding. So we've got some corners here. So I tend to draw this little squiggly shape just to say I'm not completely connected. But you know, I am a corner. I'm still working away on these edges here. So the key thing here is to shade reasonably well. I'm going to use my lead holder and start with you know, just doing a cross hatch all the way along. Again, we can, for example, we don't actually have to do the whole thing, which is kind of helpful. Uh, using an old ruler here, uh, two of them. I've got a bunch of rulers on this desk. What I can actually do is put them down and I'm very quickly cross-hatching here and then carefully smudging so I don't wreck the work I already did. So that defines that corner a bit. It's going to be the same on the back corner. So again, just in a way continuing the cross-hatch. So this time, in a way, the... Well, it keeps coming in a way. What we're doing here is adding some sort of progressive cross hatching, uh, not along any construction lines. So I'm just trying to show one contiguous surface. So this is a different type of cross hatch that we're used than we're used to, which is just laying it in as we go along. Uh, if we're Feeling ambitious later in the semester, we'll uh, actually try and draw some organic shapes with this sort of approach. Where we'll show uh, sort of uh, complex organics, like for example hands or elbows or something like this, uh, which would correspond to some of the newer CAD uh, tools we have. If we get in a bit of mess, just use the some scrap paper around to keep that tidy. Now, working along. Now we're going to have some fun inside that little curve there. So we'll keep that in our attention. Now, it's tempting to really go too fast on this. I'm trying to resist the urge to just throw down a bunch of graphite here and do this too quickly. I've done a lot of work trying to show this shape. I don't want to wreck it by getting carried away. Again, if I feel that it's time for a bit of shape or a bit, it's getting a bit too construction-y, I can do that. Now, the question is, do we want to lighten cross-hatching cross as it goes into this toenail guide or darken it? It's kind of up to us. 
uh, which is a non-answer, of course, sorry. But uh, what we need to do here is try and say, well, this is a change of shape. Theoretically, as we change shape, we should change tone. Another way to argue this is to show shape, we change the tone, so in reverse. So what I'm actually going to do here is darken it on the inside edge and then lighten as we come out. So I'm just trying to carefully, not get carried away here, show it as dark coming to light. Again, if we're feeling it's a little bit too construction-y or it's starting to look like it's hiding construction or causing trouble, we can start to smudge a tiny, again, not too much lead on here, just trying to get this to look like it's got some depth. Again, because this is a major feature of this part, it wouldn't work without it. Uh, we do need to really draw attention to this. We do not want to extend the smudging much beyond this edge. One thing to do is actually lighten with an eraser as it comes to the flat surface to make sure that it's not looking like it's still shifting shape. So as our last contour comes out, then if we smudge this a little tiny bit, it should look reasonably three-dimensional. Again, keeping it under control, right? Not getting carried away. I'm stepping quite a bit back here to see what this looks like today. No, we say, ah, oh, finally done. Unfortunately, we've got the entire other side to go. Again, I'm going to mess up my erase lines. Just use my scrap around to keep this in control. Again, these are quite thick lines. My lead holder, or the lead in the lead holder, has become quite blunt. This is okay because we are smudging as we go along, just with a fingertip and using a piece of paper if we need a guide to keep it from smudging out beyond. It's an almost arty sketching here. Okay. This is not art, we're just using art's techniques to show shape be careful here though we don't want to go beyond the corner right so one thing we can do is actually use the ruler itself to control our cross hatching just going around the edge here so i'm actually using the ruler to cross hatch it all sorts of different techniques here we can use And just trying to show as many, as much as I remember from my childhood here how to keep things tidy without getting too worried uh, about stuff. So how do we do uh, efficient work? This has been an hour. I've been drawn quite slowly this time for some reason. Trying to not mess up our existing work. Again, my hand is picking up tons of lead, uh, lead here. You'll be able to see that. The key thing is though, just to be able to come in here and clean things out. A little bit of extra smudging won't do any harm. Uh, so just trying to get things under control. Now, the point of me doing all this uh, ad nauseum is to make a make a big deal about how to clean up this top piece here. Arguably, if we darken this going in, we should lighten this coming out. Because they are, in a way, going opposite directions from the, from the light, I'm going to lighten the cross hatching around here until it gets down to its flat surface, somewhere out here. So the more it deviates from the surface, the more I'm going to have it removed. 
Again, it's we could add more cross hatching to kind of tidy that up. But the key is some smudging in here. Just try and avoid this if you're finding it a little hard. Just use the paper as you go around. And if it if it gets a bit messy, just erase. Use the eraser to pick up some lead. And get that a little edge here. Where it kind of runs out on the edges. Maybe not great. Uh, actually not that good at all, but whatever. So again, if we want to emphasize something, unemphasize it, we can just put more lead somewhere else. So I'm just going to put more color out here to say this is not deviating from the normal. So just little patches of cross hatching all around. Uh, we're more or less done here. Uh, arguably, like anything that's of the same direction should be cross hatched. So this does seem a little strange, but I'm going to go ahead here and cross hatch these faces. Anything that's kind of the same angle of the, not this one, because that's parallel to the top and this face. So just these ones, which are of the same angle as the faces we just Darkened. I'm not going to smudge these. Uh, the reason is that uh, it's just going to create some confusion if I start getting too carried away. Even though that was so bad, it was already smudged. So just trying to keep things under control. Emphasize things that are smudged beyond repair. For example, these edges in here. bad. You might want to clean up some empty areas. Again, I'm in no way scrubbing here. Uh, I'm just removing some of the lead to add some contrast to my part through the middle. I want to say this is open space. Like I don't want to lose, I definitely don't want to lose my construction lines going through all that. And this gives us a chance to say this is a hole. Uh, there's a minus a hole here. And a little bit of excessive uh, pencil. And there we go. Sorry about that. An ultra long uh, video of uh, how to draw a Simpson strong tie. Um, sorry, this is quite a bit longer than I expected to uh, sketch. I was going to go for quick this time. That didn't work out. Um, these parts can be really complicated. Um, it is tempting to just say, well, they're easy because they're cheap and fast. Uh, there can be quite a bit of work on designing these guys. Um, and the key thing here is to kind of go through very methodically. If we're going to make hundreds of thousands of these, we should get it right and often our jobs will include this sort of stuff over and over and over again uh, as you get used to this uh, we'll draw faster but for now uh, there we go that's our simpson strong tie uh, two by four joist uh, at some length thanks for watching see you in the next video